thumbs up there? Yeah. Does that mean go? Yeah. Ah, good stuff. Hello everyone, welcome back to another live stream here at the Australian Reptile Park. Pretty special day for all the staff at the Reptile Park, in particular uh, for our amazing reptile keepers like Jake over here and Brandon and Ambrose because we're all celebrating a very special birthday. It's Ambrose's, not Ambrose, it's, <laughs> it's Hugo's 70th birthday. Our giant Galapagos tortoise turned 70 today. Uh, so happy birthday to our amazing tortoise Hugo. Uh, not our top keeper, Ambrose. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, head to our social pages and make sure you watch it. Watch Hugo destroy his birthday cake now. We have a great crowd in today. Say hello to all of our mates. Oh, hello in the front there. And all social distancing, great job. Uh, and it's great to see so many people here enjoying the Australian Reptile Park and our amazing animals, just like Hugo, Elvis, Kraken, Elsa, and all the rest. All right, so today I'm gonna to feed uh, Elvis a croc. I've got Beck on the camera at the moment. And no doubt she'll pass the camera to Jake very soon uh, because Jake likes to get the camera in nice and close. Obviously, if you haven't seen this before, this basically is, I guess, our time to feed Elvis, but it also is a good time to teach you guys a little bit about crocodiles for the people that are visiting us here at the park or for you guys at home. And one of the key messages that I hope you take away from this talk and this demonstration is if you visit the northern parts of Australia, once, of course, once the borders open up, of course, uh, and you go travelling, please stay safe in croc country. Saltwater crocodiles have been on the planet for a very, very long time. Yes, they are potentially quite dangerous, but I've got to be honest, they really are just so simple to avoid. Uh, I've got a couple of little bits of food, so what we might do is I might start swimming him. I might get Jake, do you want to start swimming him back and uh, I'll keep talking about it. Or oh, maybe Brando, whoever, whoever, point of so the guys that are backing me up today, obviously I do have a few guys over there. Jake's picked up the stick now, so he's going to start moving Elvis. I've also got Brando there as well, uh, and Ambrose. Can't forget about Ambrose. The reason they're here today is to help me, I guess, if things went really, really wrong, and Elvis happened to grab me. Now, that would be horrible, not only for all the people here that are watching, but for you guys at home, but most importantly for me. So those guys are my backup, they're my protection, and if things don't go, go wrong, I know that they're going to jump in and give me a hand. But for something to go wrong, I'd probably have to make a couple of really bold decisions or maybe, you know, slip over or something like that. I've been working with crocodiles for long enough to kind of expect what Elvis is going to do. And as long as I'm paying attention, I should be able to move before he does. But in saying that, every now and then Elvis surprises you with something you haven't seen before. You've got to remember that these animals every day are figuring things out. They're watching my behaviour. And there has been a couple of times where he explodes like nothing else, and they're the rem that reminds you of what he can potentially do. He's also done a few things that also remind you of what he would do to you if he grabbed you. Now, I've talked about this story before, but Jakey, who's tapping the water right now, was cleaning the bottom of the pool. Not very well, I might add. He was scooping some leaves out of the bottom of the pond. Elvis swung around in a flash, grabbed the pool scoop and ripped it out of his arms in a flash. He then pulled that pool scoop to the bottom of the pond and started to drown it, basically. About a minute or two later, he lifted that pool scoop up and out of the water and started to thrash it from side to side. That's exactly what he's gonna do to you if he grabs onto your leg or your arm. He's gonna pull you into the deep part of the pool there. He's gonna wait for you to drown, which will happen pretty quickly. Uh, and then he's gonna lift you up and start to thrash. And what he wants to eat He's about 20 kilos worth of food, so maybe my leg and a little bit more. He's not going to eat the whole body. That'll just be scooped up by Jake again later, hopefully better than he did the first time he used a pool scoop. So you can see what Jake's doing now. He's tapping the water there. He's sending out little vibrations. Um, we might swap over, you reckon, Jake, because he's starting to fly around a little bit. But what he's basically doing is signalling to the crocodile where he wants him to go. And the crocodile responds very quickly to those vibrations in the water. So what we'll do is we'll change camera people over. Jake's going to take over the camera lens and then we're going to get it nice and close and feed Elvis the crocodile. So we've got a little bit of meat, a little bit of bird today that we'll feed out. So we'll bring him around and really in the wild crocodiles wouldn't bother chasing around tiny bits of food like we're going to feed him today. He'd much prefer a really large kill. Something from the size of an adult kangaroo all the way to the size of a water buffalo. Now kangaroo, adult male, 50 kilos maybe. Water buffalo, now you're talking about an animal that weighs a thousand kilos and they can take them down, no worries. All right, I'm just gonna focus on the crocodile. I'm actually a bit stiff in the back from that Hugo work this morning. Um, we'll see how we go. So I'm sending out little vibrations again. You'll start to drag his feet forward. You'll 
we'll start to wind up that tail, hopefully, and we'll see if we'll put a little hit on. But we'll see how we go. Here we go. So one to the side, a little there, give a little look. We should get that tail going. He didn't really go, but... Get it done this way, mate. I can't go that way. So that's a good slap there. Couple. There we go. We'll get the camera in a bit. All right. Yes, that is the best camera footage you'll ever see. That's as close as you ever want to get to a giant saltwater croc. Now, has he swallowed the food yet, Jay? Yeah. He has. Beautiful. Look at those teeth. They are the... That is... Not they are. That is the best set teeth you're ever going to see on any crocodile. You can go to any crocodile, any zoo, all around the country and you will not see teeth as good as that. Now saltwater crocodiles typically have anywhere between 64 and 72 teeth. Elvis' teeth are massive. In fact, his largest tooth is three times larger than Eric, our previous crocodile's teeth. So, his largest tooth. So they're absolutely massive and they're bullet shaped. They're designed to hold on. So you can imagine if they grab a horse on the leg, those teeth create perforations in the skin, and when they start to thrash around, that's how they're able to rip away the chunks of meat that they do want to eat. All right, so we're going to bring them around to this side now and give them a little bit more food. Now, if you haven't seen Elvis before, and a couple of quick facts, he's 54 years old, he weighs 460 kilograms, and he's approximately four and a half metres long. And he's been living here at the Reptile Park for approximately 11 years. And before that, he was at a crop farm. But before that, he was actually living up in the Northern Territory, Darwin Harbour. He was a wild-caught crocodile. Uh, now, the problem with Elvis is he's starting to hang around boats and people too much. So they sent him to the crop farm. And then, thankfully, eventually, he's ended up here with the team here at the park, which is great. All right, we'll give him that one more time. We've had a little look. We might walk him out a little bit. We'll see how he goes. He's a bit ginger today. He's very slow. What's going on, mate? Yeah, what's that? You don't like KFC? He wants my leg? I don't even know if he wants to take it. Oh. <laughs> you killing machine that you are. Here we go. What's a tickle? Hang on, this is not going to work. This is not, you're not doing much, Elvis. Come on, do something. Do something for me. That was a little slap. You meant to chase me and try and kill me. Oh, that's a bit better. That's, he's firing up a little bit more now. That's more like it. That's the Elvis we like to see. All right, let's give him the bit now. Oh, no, missed it. All right, take it, take it. Oh my god. It's yours, mate. There we go. And that's the worst crocodile feed I've ever done. Thank you. Well done. Oh my god. Oh, I've had a long day, alright? A very, very long day. Anyway, that's not how Elvis usually comes out charging, trying to kill me, but he's probably had enough. It's been a long day and a long few days for Elvis himself. He's an amazing animal, one of the best critters I've ever got to work with, one by far one of the best animals we have here at the park, and I hope you all enjoy that and laughing a little bit at my expense. Give him a round of applause. Thank you all for coming. We live in crazy times at the moment, but it's good that we can provide you guys with an opportunity to enjoy our amazing wildlife and see all the big smiles on your faces. We do hope to see all you folk at home out of the reptile park very, very soon. In particular, during these amazing school holidays, lots of good weather, lots of amazing animals. We we'll hope to see you soon. Uh, signing off for myself, Jake, Brando, Ambrose, and Beck in the corner, and we'll see you next time. Hooroo!